Hello, everyone, and welcome to the episode of the Bull Take Scouting Podcast. Today, we're joined by our special guest and 2021 NFL Draft prospect from Miami, Ohio, cornerback Emmanuel Rugamba. He was 13 All-Mac uh, in 2019, won the uh, MAC championship, was defensive uh, MVP of the game. Manny, would you like to introduce yourself a little more? Uh, Emmanuel Rugamba here uh, from Miami of Ohio, defensive back. I appreciate you guys having me. Yeah, of course. So um, I think we'll just hop right into the first question. Um, a little bit more of an icebreaker. So, you know, Manny, when did you start playing football and what was, you know, the moment or the time that you really fell in love with the game? Um, started playing football when I was nine years old. Uh, my mother uh, had seven other brothers. I was the youngest of eight brothers, two sisters. So she was just trying to find some way for us to, um, you know, spend some time away from her or whatnot, or, you know, just not being so busy all the time. So uh, she was going to sign us up for basketball. And then the cutoff age was 10, 10 years old, and I was nine at the time. So uh, we drove around the rec center when – I couldn't get signed up for basketball, and then the first football sign she saw, she signed me up. Man, no, that's that's a great story. Um, and yeah, we here we have Justin here shouting out that 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 Michigan pick. Do you, do you want to elaborate on that on that moment? Oh uh, man, that was just that was just a credit to um, Coach Parker, credit to the guys that I was surrounded around in that room. Um, you know, it was a short notice; didn't know if I was going to start that week, but um, I was really prepared. Like I said, the guys around me helped me a lot. Guys like Miles Taylor, he was a safety that played at Iowa. I'm sure they know who he is. And uh, just being able to feel comfortable around guys because, you know, you've known that they're prepared. You've known that they've helped you prepare. So to be able to, you know, catch that pick in that game in my first start, it was just kind of like icing on the cake with all the preparation. Yeah, no, that, that that's absolutely amazing. And so is there – would that, would that be your favorite memory of, of your years playing football, or are there are there a couple other special occasions that that come to mind? Oh uh, man, I would say uh, I know everybody says it and it's cliche, but uh, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of football moments that beat the ones that you get in high school. You know, playing high school football, you know, playing for the state championship, those cold games. I could just think off the top of my head multiple memories, but uh, Michigan is definitely up there. I would say that and being able to win a MAC championship, in Miami, Ohio. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not a college football player, but I played football in high school, so my my team wasn't very good. Um, but I can I can definitely relate. There's no, there's nothing like you know playing those cold games where it's you know 10 degrees. There, there's nothing like it. All right, um, I think we'll get into a little bit uh, NFL draft talk now. So um, you've told us that you you already talked to a, a few NFL teams, so you know. Um, what was it like when, you know, you got that first contact from an NFL team or an NFL coach? Uh, it was kind of, I don't know, I really didn't know. I would compare it to probably like receiving your first scholarship in high school, I would say. It's one of those things where, you know, you grow up saying, I want to play in the NFL. You grow up saying, I want to play college football. You play in college football. You say you want to play in the NFL, you know, and you obviously can't go right away. It's not like you can do one and done, so of those things that you repeat to yourself every day four or five times a day so to even get a call or even a text message or just see that anybody sees you on their board uh, for me it was kind of like I wouldn't say a dream come true because the work isn't done yet but it was just something nice to feel that the work that you put in is not going unnoticed yeah when when was that that first uh, moment where you where you uh heard that you were being considered as a potential nfl uh, prospect uh i would say that was my after the Mac championship game after the Mac championship game is when I started to receive those kind of contacts. And, uh, it was, uh, it was relieving because uh, I had the red shirt when I got to Miami of Ohio and the football world is not really about what you've done, but it's about what you're doing. So it was sit out for a whole year and just watch the whole football world move forward. You know, you kind of get discouraged sometimes here and there. So, um, to be able to get that call, like I said, it was something that just kind of took a monkey off your back, you know, feel like your work is, being seen. Yeah. So, um, like you said, you, you redshirted, um, f your first year at Mi Miami, Ohio, and you played at, um, university of Iowa before. So I don't know if you wanted to touch on a little bit, what, what was your reasoning for transferring? And then what was that whole process like of, you know, almost having to be recruited again a second time? Oh man, I would say that recruitment was, it was, it was, it was a little different 
I would say. It was a little different because it's not like high school where you don't know too much about everything. It was uh my it was probably my second second time around getting recruited, so I was really familiar with the process. But um Coach Martin is a coach that I've known since high school and it was a place that I felt comfortable. Um I spoke with him my junior year of high school, I spoke with him my senior year of high school as well. And uh he was just the same guy that I met back when I was seventeen years old. So I knew that I wanted to go there and I wanted to play for him and wanted to give it my all. Yeah, really glad that you got to be able to get that that great fit and and star in, in your role at, at Miami. And so just back to back to the NFL draft process. How how is the whole process unfolding for you right now? How just from from maybe a couple a couple months ago when the season ended all the way through April? Just take take us through uh, the, the steps in the process a little bit from from the player perspective. Uh, the the process was definitely unorthodox this year. Yeah, uh, going off of everything that was going on, uh, my senior year was cut short. We only played three games, so I was kind of um, dwindling between the decision of coming back to school or uh, declaring for the NFL draft. And, you know, after talking with my family and everything and those that, I, that are close to me and that I can find in when I need help, I feel like it's the best decision, but like I said, it wasn't the decision. So um, as far as that wise, I've been in New Jersey uh, for the past six weeks training at Test uh, Football Academy, and that's been that's Great people take care of you there. They're really invested in you, and they 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 try to pull out the best out. Yeah. So um, obviously you're training with other NFL prospects. So uh, I'm not sure if you're allowed to say who you're training with, but you know who are, who are a few guys that you know that you're training with for the NFL. Uh, I don't want to speak on too many other people. Like I don't know how to about that, but I do have a team behind Tommy Doyle. Uh, he's at Miami of Ohio too, at left tackle. He's getting he's getting looks as well. So, uh, I feel like it was nice playing with him. Get some familiar faces around, so early on it was a lot easier to get into the environment. Yeah, do you, do you have any idea yet what what really draft draft weekend is going to look like for you? Because I, I just imagine that's just going to be a crazy frenzy and just uh, some some really great emotions too. So how how do you how do you envision that unfolding when it when it comes around pretty soon? Man, uh, it's one of those things that you've thought about for a long time. You've thought about since you were a kid. And um, it's something that you've had a picture in your head of how it's going to go. But like I said, with the circumstances with COVID and everything like that, I don't plan to have too many people around. Uh, first and foremost, I want to you know, keep everybody healthy around me, especially my family. And um, so I would say probably they're probably modest of some sort, but the excitement is definitely going to be through the roof, uh, regardless of what happens. Yeah, I mean, that, that must be – it must be crazy. I can't imagine, you know, how hard it must be to not be able to celebrate that moment with, you know, everyone that you would want to because, you know, it's it's more than a few people, um, you know, that are influential, you know, all the way up from the friends and the teammates you make in high school and then in college and then obviously, you know, your family. So, you know, I, I can't imagine how hard it must be to say, you know, we're only going to celebrate with a few people, but I, obviously I completely – respect and you know the decision to only make it a few people like you said we got to make sure everybody's safe and you know hopefully everything clears up soon enough and you can have a little bit you know easier of a transition um into the nfl with rookie mini camps and stuff so something i wanted to touch on um was in 2019 you had 85 tackles uh from the cornerback position and that's just extremely impressive to me so you definitely um, well, to me, at least, it seems like you take a lot of pride in the fact that you have you play a really physical game. Um, so do, do you take a lot of pride in that? And, you know, you, you're you making tackles more than pretty much any other cornerback uh, in the league. Uh, definitely, definitely take pride in it. It's something that um, I noticed that I needed to improve. Like I said, when I registered at Miami, uh, registered and sucked, but it was it was definitely things you can take from it. It's the most football I've watched. I started playing because that was the first fall that I wasn't playing football when football season was going on. So uh, I noticed that I had to add that to my game and pretty much mindset. You know, you got to be willing to sacrifice. It sounds messed up, but you got to be body at times. It's really just a concept of getting the guy on the ground and just making sure that he stays on the ground. It's like if one gets him, I have to get him. That's the mindset you got to have. And when I took that with my game, I really didn't notice. Uh, 
how many tackles I had until, you know, the end of the season I looked up. So it's like, man, uh, the mind that I had is kind of working. Yeah, and just, just to, to anyone watching who's, who's up and coming, uh, playing football, yeah, just just – as Manny just said, you gotta you gotta nail your tackling. Coaches just want reliable tacklers on, on the field, guys who who can be trusted in the open field to, to bring their the ball carrier down. And so that's definitely respectable. But tell us a little bit more about your game. How how what do what would you want uh, an NFL team to, to know about you, about what you can bring to the table for them uh, if, if you were to be on their roster? Uh, I feel like the first thing I can bring to the table is my IQ as well as consistency. Uh, it's it's not about you know, how many mistakes you make is about how many times are you going to make that mistake? Yeah, you know I mean, can you learn from that mistake? And just to apply that to playing fast. If you have a high IQ, you don't make the same mistake twice, and you're always in position. Uh, more often than not, plays, and you won't be chasing the game. I feel like that's one thing that, um, from my, when I was a freshman to where I'm now, it's one thing that I had to understand that overall good cornerback play isn't just going out there and just picking the ball off every time, trying to make every play. It's really about just staying. And I feel like that's one of the biggest things that I do. I stay consistent as far as tackling, as far as coverage-wise. Those are things that I bring to the table. Yeah, yeah you, you've actually had two seasons under 48% in terms of a completion percentage, percentage against you. So that's that's just inc incredibly impressive and really speaks to, to that consistency that you have in, in coverage. So. I, I'm I'm really sure that that's that's definitely something you take pride in. But just to just to switch on uh, how you were talking about when you were a red shirt, you really focused on on what you need to improve, and I'm sure that that you definitely made a lot of, a lot of strides, and that that's definitely seen on tape. But just heading into the NFL now, obviously any player can can always improve. So what what are you, what are some areas that you're still looking to to work on in your game? Uh, I would say every aspect of my game. Um, the one thing is the little saying that people has is if you don't use it, you lose it. So it's like um, one thing I'm, I'm a big I'm a big learner is one thing that I like I like to take pride in. So to be able to not just learn from coaches, but to be able to learn from guys around the league, wherever I end up, I'll definitely be asking around. I'll definitely be taking my own mental notes of, of guys who do things the right way, or guys who've had success, or guys who continue to have success. Just try to take every, which part of the game I take and apply it to myself. So I feel like as long as there's guys in the NFL, as long as there's new guys coming in. Even at the college level, sometimes a freshman might come in and, you know, you might try to overlook that freshman, but he might do something that's a little better than you. But if you can figure out how to do it better than him, then you'll end up being better. And at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's really just competition, you know, and being competitive brings out that nature of not just trying to learn from yourself, but trying to take everybody else's game and trying to make it your own in some way, shape or form and try to perform better than they do. Yeah, I just want to touch on something that you, you brought up a little bit earlier when you mentioned your tackling um, and you, you said that when you redshirted, you know, tackling was, was your weakness and something you wanted to work on. And, you know, that, that's something I really, I really love that it's, it's not always easy for people to admit their weaknesses. And then it's even harder for a lot of people to work on their weaknesses and make them a strength. And, you know, that's, that's something that I've heard from um, some of the best athletes in any sport is figure out your biggest weakness and turn your biggest weakness um, into your biggest strength. And then, you know, they say eventually you won't have any more weaknesses. Uh, so, I, you know, I definitely think that's that's definitely a great trait to have. And that's, you know, it's not something that a lot of people can do. So, you know, is is there something, you know, in your life other than, you know, just having the dream to play in the NFL? Is there is there something else in your life that, you know, motivates you to just want to be better every day? Uh, I would say my mother. My mother definitely motivates me to be better every day. Uh, sometimes I can call her a bad day and, you know, she'll straighten me up, really, you know, always tell me the best things, the best things to motivate me. And just seeing her life, raising 10 kids on her own, herself through nursing school, it's like the least I can do is make it to the NFL, you know what I'm saying? Because what she's done is you give that same pot to 85% of the people you walk past every day, and I'm not sure everybody can do it. So I would say I don't got to look too far for motivation. Man, that that's definitely really inspirational, and I'm I'm really happy that that you said that because behind every successful athlete, that there there are people who really were right there with them, and very often the parents and the amount of sacrifices that that were made. And so, uh, I, do you want to extend a little bit on on that feeling of pride you're going to get in terms of if being able to represent um, all the hard work that's been put uh, by all the people, including your mother, uh, in terms of getting you uh, this far in your football journey? Man, it it it'll mean. Because it's not it's not just my mother. It's definitely not just my mother. It's 
the, the, the parents of my friends who drove me to camps, the parents of my friends who drove me to not just football practice, but basketball practice, like everything you've done up to this point, uh, somebody has helped you in some way, shape or form. It's like, everybody wants to claim that self-made, you know, title, but at the end of the day, like, I don't know too many self-made people literally just make themselves. It's like everything that happens to you on a day-to-day -day basis, whether you like it or not, shapes who you are and all the interactions you have. Time you were what, three years old, three years old it's, it's where you're at now at 22, about three. So um, it's a thing that continues. I'm continuously seeking help. I'm continuously trying to find you know, people I can learn from. So um, I'll just continue to do that and to be able to, you know, make it to the big stage uh, in the NFL and try to excel in the NFL. Um, it'll just be a credit to them. So I just want to ask you a quick question um, about, you know, this whole COVID situation and obviously the season and preparing for the college season was so different this year, but what, what was it like, you know, not, you know, having to prepare every day, but still not knowing if you're going to have a season and then, you know, having a season, but only being able to play three games, you know, can you just, you know, take me through what was going through your head and everyone on your team's head, you know, every day, not knowing, you know, what the future held. Uh, excuse me. But it was definitely up and down. Uh, the MAC was the first conference to cancel their season. So once that got settled out and they, they said we were canceling our season, I started to prepare for the NFL draft. My whole mind switched. You go from team, 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 and then now you're trying to get ready for the biggest interview of your life. And you go back into yourself and then – there two months go by and then news comes around that we might have a season. Then you gotta shift your focus again, but then you still have to kind of plan for if they don't what you will be doing, who you won't be doing, who you're gonna sit down with agents wise, who you're gonna sit down with training wise, uh, how you're gonna stay in shape, uh, with everything going on if it's shut down. So um it was I would say in one word catastrophic, I would say. But um like I said, it's something that everybody is going through. Everybody's going through right now in different parts of the world. So um, it was just one, that's one of the things that I kind of told myself as I was going through it, like, you're not the only person going through this. Uh, there's going to be people who won't be able to go through this. So you want to be the person to come out on the other side. Yeah, and just on a better note, despite all these challenges that, that this season put on you, your team, and basically anyone in any situation, even – Beyond football, obviously. What 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 was like one of the highlights of this season that that you could find uh, so some happiness in uh, even in the midst of all this? Man, I would say the highlight of the season was just playing football because you we never know how many games we were going to play. I, I remember our first game of the year. Uh, we were excited. We played uh, Ball State. They won the MAC championship this year. Hats off to them. They're a great team. Um, but we won that first game against. Them. And I remember being in the locker room and coaches like, all right, we're celebrating this one. But, you know, we got to spread our brains because we might not get another one. You know what I mean? So we got to get, get to work because, one, our practice might get canceled and we won't be able to practice for three days and have to go out there and play. So you don't know where the game's going to go. So um, I think my favorite thing is being able to play football. Even though we only played three games, some other people played eight in our conference, seven, eight games. Just to be able to go out there and play, uh, it was something that, it was definitely felt normal. You know what I mean? Like everything was going chaotic around you, but being able to play football in the fall felt normal. So that's what I enjoyed the most. Yeah, and you, you didn't even bring up your 60 yard uh, interception return for a touchdown against Akron. Oh, man. Actually, uh, that's actually the first touchdown I've had in my collegiate career. So I would say that's that's the only good thing to come out of COVID. I would say just playing football and have to do that. So. Um, we only got three games, but to be able to do something that I've never done at the collegiate level, uh, it was definitely it was definitely exciting. Yeah, and just fla just flashing back to 2019, how did you, you guys won the, the MAC championship and and you were defensive uh, MVP of that of that championship game? Just how did that feel when you when you work all off season, all season, and for it to culminate in such a success? That that must be an incredible feeling. Man, it was a great feeling. It was a great feeling because, uh, like I said prior, I, I uh, redshirted. And during my redshirt year, I, you know, I tried to do my best to be around the team and try to help it everywhere, every which way I could. Uh, I was on the scout team, played receiver there, you know, played in practice, worked hard all day, every day. 
and then after that, the offseason came, and then we had a little rough start in the beginning of 2019, and then just to, you know, continue to go through obstacles, dating up to when I got on campus, uh, to go up there and, you know, be able to win a MAC championship, the first one they've won in years, and uh, actually win the defense. It was like, I don't know, I would say it was really emotional. I had my family there. But it was something that I, I don't think I'll ever forget. Just it was kind of one of those things. You don't you don't really not a lot of your work in life you get to see not all of it. You know, a lot of the time you're putting in work and you won't you won't see it. You'll just look up one day and you'll be where you want to be. But uh to see the work and not just win the championship but win the defense defensive MVP it was uh it was overwhelming, I would say. Yeah, and you mentioned playing wide receiver on the scout team um, when you were redshirted. In high school, you played wide receiver and cornerback. Um, obviously, you, you made the correct decision playing cornerback in college. Um, but if what 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 side of the ball did you prefer, you know, in, in high school? You know, did you like offense better or did you like defense better? Oh, man, I'm a receiver that plays corner to this day. <laughs> I'm not – I wouldn't say it was a side that I like more receivers who don't like scoring touchdowns. You know what I mean? It's like, that's like the best game to be able to cross the line and you get six points. I mean, when I played a uh, scout team receiver, I actually won a uh, scout team offensive player of the year. So like I said, I take pride in that. For sure. Yeah, that that's great. And I mean, it, it does, it allows you to have some, some really good ball skills for, for a cornerback. And so just, just adds to your, to your palette of, of positive traits. And I also just want to say, if anyone's watching along and you, and you want a question that you want to ask a question to have it, to have Manny answer, feel free to pop it in the chat and we'll bring it up uh, before we, before we close out. But just, just a couple more questions. And I was, this is kind of one that, that I, I'd always want to ask. Uh, what was like the best piece of advice that, that you've received uh, in terms of your whole career from either a coach or, or a player or anyone that, that comes to mind? Uh, that you've never arrived, I would say. It was something that I was told early on my freshman year. And, you know, you, you get it drilled in your ear over and over and over. And uh, it kind of sometimes it might go inside one ear, out the other. But once you go over time, like four or five years down the road, and you – you know, you you hit your obstacles and you've had your success. Uh, that saying right there and that advice is something that you don't really forget. Like, you don't really ever arrive. Like, as soon as you come on as a rookie, I would assume that there's guys who don't want you to do well. I would assume they don't want you to take their job. At the end of the day, it's like they're trying to feed their family. So you've never really arrived. No matter how much success you have, you've never really showed up. So you just got to continue to try to get better. Yeah, so now I, this is a question that, you know, I, I always want to hear the player's perspective of, you know, who was the best wide receiver that you faced throughout your, your collegiate career? I would say I, I, I would say I played some talented guys. Um, uh, Tyler Johnson out of Minnesota was pretty good. Um, man, Justin Hall out of Boston, he was pretty good. Um, as far as receivers, I, could I could I could I even say players? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Played Saquon Barkley, so that sums it up. Jared Patterson, the dude ran for like I don't know five hundred yards in the game or something like eight hundred something like that. Eight like hundred and four touchdowns. Eight hundred and four touchdowns. So it's like I I feel like I played against a lot of pretty good, pretty talented players, whether it was in the MAC or the Big Time. Yeah, Tyler, Tyler Johnson. I know. Obviously, we're a scouting page. He he was a guy that I really liked coming out uh, coming out of college, and now he's a Super Bowl champion. So, you know, I mean that 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 could be that could be you next year, Manny. I'm God willing. Yeah. No. So we we wish you all the all the best of luck as you close out this this process and head into the NFL. And I mean, it's it's clear both both from your game film and from just. Just the way you respond to these questions that you've got you've got the makings of an NFL player and we really hope that your dream does come true and I'm sure I'm sure you're you're gonna be able to to succeed and definitely in some way. Yeah, so before before we close this out, um I just wanna, you know, let's let's say you were in an interview setting for a second with an NFL team, um and and you're the person interviewing you asked you to describe yourself in three words. What what would those three words be? Uh resilient, compassionate and outgoing any you know what, what's your reasoning for those uh just been, i feel like 
My family and I have been through a lot. Away from football, I feel like football tests you. So I've had my, I've had my obstacles in football, um, and I just can try to continue to move forward. Uh, compassion, I care about people, I treat people the right way, I how I want to be treated, and I'm outgoing. I like that. Definitely like to have fun. I think you know. I think those are three, three great, great qualities of of any person, um, no matter you know, what you're doing. But like Costa said, we wish you all the best. Um, thanks for coming on, uh, having this interview with us. It's been been really fun uh, just getting to know you a little bit more. Um, and we'll be sure to, you know, keep everybody updated with, you know, how, how you're moving forward through this draft process. And, you know, eventually when, when you're with an NFL team, we will make sure we let all our followers know. And, you know, we wish you the best. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Of course, man. Thanks for coming on.